In Washington, D.C., a keynote for the nation's celebration of Navy Day. Following announcement of the crushing defeat of the Japanese fleet in the Philippines, a grateful nation hails the ships, planes, men, and women of its Navy. Battleship Iowa has now joined the United States Navy in active duty. In pictures just released, made during the 45,000 ton warship's testing cruise, the Iowa's commander, Captain McCrae, orders her nine 16 inch guns to fire a mighty salvo. Anti aircraft batteries open up, a powerful contribution to the United Nations Navy. Mrs. Franklin D. Roosevelt is a guest at an exhibition of paintings by soldier artists in New York. Pictures made by officers and men in far-flung combat zones give vivid impressions of the global war. From the far north, Aleutian landscapes and air bases. This army art exhibit interprets battlefront experiences to those at home, as here, an open-air bath on the Anzio beachhead in Italy. Making classes for boys, an experiment in education, are added to the traditional curriculum in a Maryland elementary school. In sewing class, once reserved strictly for girls, the boys learn skills that will always be useful. The boys study the fine art of cooking and do well at it too. 400 youngsters from 12 to 14 have already completed this course, and from now on, they'll feel at home in the kitchen. Men of the United States Marine Corps during the past year have carried their banners across the Pacific into the strongholds of a stubborn and a vicious enemy. They have assaulted coral reefs and jungle beaches, have pursued the enemy through swamps and over mountains and in dugouts and caves. They have attacked the Japanese with every weapon, rifle and small arms, rocket and cannon, tank and plane. have stormed islands once considered invulnerable. Bougainville, Tarawa, Cape Gloucester, Kwajalein, Eniwetok, Saipan, Tinian, Guam, Palau. the Marine Corps marks its 169th anniversary, a proud date for a service that has been always in the forefront of its country's battles. Their irresistible fighting advance to the very threshold of the enemy's empire deserves tribute. As the Marines enter their fourth year of war, their hearts turn toward home, but every step takes them further from home. There will be no celebration for them until there is peace throughout the world. For they have paid a price in suffering, toil, and death to keep high the ideals of honor, justice, and decency for which they fight.
German occupation forces hurriedly quit the great Belgian city of Antwerp. Their retreat before the advancing allies is impeded by Patriot sabotage of every kind, including transport. These scenes were filmed by concealed Patriot cameramen. Out of a window comes the first Belgian flag as advanced forces of the British Second Army enter the city. German prisoners are rounded up by Belgium's Patriot White Army, now out in the open after four years of underground resistance. Antwerp, the best port on the European continent, is practically unharmed. This is Aachen in the German homeland. American planes come overhead to pound the resisting city with more than a hundred tons of bombs. Inside this Nazi textile and coal center, astride the Allied path into the Rhine Valley, are 3,000 enemy troops. Refusing to surrender at first, they had to be blasted out. Two hundred guns join the attack. For the first time in more than a century, a German city is under devastating siege. After a two-day hammering, men of General Hodge's American First Army move into Aachen. From street to street, from buildings, rubble heaps, sewers, the Germans continue the fight. Slowly, against heavy resistance all the way, the Yanks move in. Six German counterattacks have been broken outside the city. After seven days of fighting, the city, with a peacetime population of 160,000, is now almost totally destroyed. This is Aachen. First large Nazi city to be captured by United States troops. The first German surrender on German soil in 130 years. It will not be the last.